Good afternoon, hello, welcome to the Triathlon Dan YouTube channel. My name is Daniel and this is Sam. Sam is a performance nutritionist and I am an amateur triathlete. I've been working with Sam the last few months. You've been giving me a tailored diet plan. We've worked towards me losing some weight, trying to get fitter, doing all the things that you're probably trying to do as well if you're an athlete. So what we thought we'd do today is me glean as much informa information out of Sam as possible, potentially uncork a like tin of worms and talk about proteins more specifically dairy proteins versus non-dairy proteins so maybe soy pea those sorts of things the benefits and drawbacks of each now i was previously a vegan now i'm vegetarian so i have now incorporated whey protein into my life now this isn't particularly affiliated with any brand this is just the stuff i've got in the house yep. basically so come on then sam cause a riot in the comment section down below what is the difference between whey protein and non-dairy proteins so the the vegan's not strong enough. <laughs> well, okay, so within any type of protein, there's a number of amino acids, basically, and the amino acid blend is what sort of you know characterizes that protein source ultimately. Now we know from a you know years and years of research that the amount of leucine, so that's a specific amino acid in in pretty much all proteins or protein sources. It's the amount of leucine which is critical to support the, the growth of new muscle, for example, or recovery or whatever it might be. Now, based on that, we would always think, and rightly so, that dairy protein or whey protein is the optimal protein to use. But what I would say is it's not, you know, we, we don't want to get to the point where we go, well, if we can't have whey because we're vegan or we follow a certain you know mm -hmm. diet that we should Somebody ignore dairy, we it? should ignore other types of protein so when we talk about protein we're thinking about a hierarchy um, generally speaking so if we can get the total amount of protein right in the day that is the optimum mm -hmm. to start with now like a then, triangle. yeah we can think about <laughs> a triangle yeah we can both sit here like this um, the total amount is the, the key point here. So using things like pea protein, this is clean lean protein from New Zest, 19, 20 grams of carbs in this sachet, uh, 20 grams of protein in this sachet. Although it's pea protein, that's going to contribute to getting enough protein in the diet and therefore it's important. The layer down from that is then, well, can we think about the distribution of that protein through the day. So I think in one of our other vi videos we talked about using protein yogurts, for example, mm -hmm. as, a, as a snack, and that's a good way to get protein in in the afternoon or in the mid-morning or something like that. And, and so getting regular amounts of protein through the day is gonna help or be optimal for recovery, supporting the adaptation to the training that we're doing, building new muscle, um, supporting yeah recovery of muscles uh, and also that is going to keep us you know in terms of like appetite regulation it's a positive thing it's going to keep us full regular boluses of protein is the way to go so that's the next layer down yeah. from the total amount of protein mm -hmm. and then we can go a layer down from that and think about the type and of course that might be driven by certain dietary uh, things that people might want to follow diet you know dietary practices mm -hmm. but what i would say is you shouldn't just think well, pea protein or vegan protein or whatever it is that we're using isn't, you know, sufficient. It, we now see that if you can get enough protein in your diet, it doesn't really matter too much where it comes from and the source that it comes from, mm -hmm. as long as we're getting that top level of amount of protein yeah. correct. So we shouldn't just ignore, you know, protein and think, well, it's not got enough leucine in to maybe stimulate, you know, the growth mm -hmm. of muscle or whatever it is. Um, or as, as good as like whey protein can, it's still going to have, if you can get the right amount of protein in the diet through the day, then that's that's the best approach. So number basically. one, get enough protein full stop, yeah. and then look at the more detailed bits of what is better than others or fits your lifestyle. Yeah, so essentially. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. So basically don't, don't lose too much sleep over it. If you're getting the protein in, then that's, that's generally good enough, that's wicked. What about casein protein? Sometimes you say, use that at night. Yeah, so casein protein's a really good option if, uh, you know you, you might want to top up your protein before bed if you've not got enough protein in during the day or you're a particularly heavy athlete or bigger athlete and you might need another supplement to, mm -hmm. to achieve your optimal amount of protein intake for that day um, so casein is a slow release 
protein. So whey protein, for example, is released from the gut into the bloodstream fairly quick, mm -hmm. which is really great for recovery. And that's why you know we talk about whey protein immediately after exercise because it's going to support quick recovery. Casein protein is a lot more slow release. So if you have that maybe an hour before bed or something like that, you're getting um, a slow release of amino acids into the blood and that will support recovery overnight. Um, and that's generally where it's being used um, as a, yeah, with athletes and things like uh, and other people to support you know, recovery from sessions. It's great if you're doing a late night session, many of us train in the evening either you know, before dinner or after dinner or something like that, mm -hmm. before bed, it's a great option to have at that point to support, also you're getting sufficient protein after that session Got to it. support recovery and you can just you know, extend that period overnight where you're recovering. Yeah, a lot of people will be training around life, won't they? They'll have yeah. things in the, on the evening where they then train afterwards and so on. So yeah, that's, that's great, thanks Sam. So this sort of advice I've received over the last few months. So I did have a, what was I say, a soy? Uh, your SIS Rego. Yeah, was it soy? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, yes. so I went from that onto using whey, and that's you know tailored advice based on what training I'm doing and when I'm training, all those reasons Sam's just gone through. This is a general video. If you want more specific tailored advice, I can tell you that it's made a genuine benefit to my performance over the last few months, and there's a whole number of things that are picked up when you have some one-to-one -one specific guidance. I'll leave all Sam's links in the description down below. Feel free to reach out to him for a no-pressure chat about what your needs might be and how you and your team might, might yep. come together to, to support people. Absolutely. So yeah, please check him out. Thank you, Sam, for that. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.